and welcome to Connected. Today, my special guest is a digital nomad, Samantha Gross, who will be sharing with us her experience living and working as a digital nomad. Do not go anywhere. Connected starts right now. Samantha is a travel blogger at There She Goes Again. She started her site at the end of her first year living in Korea. Her site focuses on solo female travel, advice and guides, and all kinds of information she hopes to find when researching somewhere new. Her blog has grown to have an emphasis on travel around Korea with countless other countries mixed in. Additionally, she is the co-owner of Female Digital Nomads, the largest group for female-identifying individuals pursuing the digital nomad lifestyle. She also works behind the scenes for other travel bloggers on content and social media management. It is my pleasure today to introduce Samantha Gross, who's talking to us all the way from Philadelphia in the US. Samantha, thank you so much for taking the time to do this today. Welcome to Connected. Samantha, please tell us and clarify for us, what is a digital nomad? Sure. So a digital nomad is essentially someone who can work remotely, whether online or by phone or something, and then they take that opportunity and they just travel and live different places um, instead of being in just one place. I see. And how did your life lead you towards this path? Um, I think it's more like a series of things. So I always liked traveling, like even in middle school and high school, like there was an Italy trip in high school and I always knew I was going to figure out how to get on that trip, like even when I was 13 or 14 years old. Um, and then in college, I studied abroad twice to Korea and once to, or once to Korea and once to Spain. Um, and I majored in English and Spanish with a minor in business just to give myself flexibility. Um, and like as soon as I graduated, I got a job teaching in Korea and I immediately went over. And there I met like a whole community of creative people, um, both in person and online, of just people who are doing different things and essentially becoming digital nomads and living their lives online. I see. And, um, among all of these people that you met and you know that they have this lifestyle, what are the professions that you generally see see them having? Yeah, um, a lot of it is usually content creation. So like writers, videographers or video editors, photographers. Um, yeah, just like a lot of behind the scenes work. A lot of the people I've met, they do like all sorts of writing. Just like any website you go to that has a blog or someone who has an email newsletter or even just like a new company created a product and they need someone to help them write the copy to sell the product. Like there's always someone who can do that. Um, and there's just a lot of opportunity. Right. And how, let's say, let's say you are like a professional in one of these areas and you would like to get in contact with, with, this, uh, the people that are uh, living this lifestyle. How do you get to them? Is there a, a website or do you need to be, uh, somebody needs to like kind of invite you or how, how do you guys find each other? Yeah, I think honestly the best way is social media. So like the absolute best way is Facebook groups. Um, I'm a co-owner of Female Digital Nomads, which has 55,000 women in it. And that right there is 55,000 potential people to talk to right. who are in different stages of pursuing the digital nomad lifestyle. Right. So basically what you do is you probably have to actually have like a big uh, presence digitally, right? Like you started there with Facebook or Instagram or how did you start it? Yes. Yeah, so 
It depends on what you're trying to do. Um, so like if you are, I don't know, if you're a video editor, maybe you'll start at a company and then you'll say, hey, I kind of want to start working remotely and you build up trust and then you could eventually work your way to just video editing for a company and then your portfolio is there so you can reach out to other people, but you don't necessarily need a huge digital presence to prove that you're a good video editor. Um, for me, I started as a travel blogger um, and I still am a travel blogger. That's one of my main, um, like main sources of income. And I started as a travel blogger and as a blogger, you kind of have to become like a bunch of different positions. You're like your boss, you're a writer, you're a photographer, you're a social media person. And you kind of become not even an expert, but just, you know, like, you know what you're doing eventually. So if you're not making money as a blogger or as a creative, you can then turn around and say, okay, well, maybe I don't have enough money to live off my blog alone. But now I know I know SEO or I know photography, like photo editing. So I can look for jobs or cold pitch companies and say, hey, um, these are my photos. If you like this style, I can I can photograph your products for you or something like that. I see. So right now you, well, not right now, but at the moment you uh, work on two different projects. The female, no, you belong, is it a group or you are working on them as projects? Um, kind of both. So it's a group um, that my friend Milu started, I think 2016. Um, and it, we, it just grew very fast. And now that we've both become a bit more established in our careers, we can turn to female digital nomads and say, hey, let, how can we make this group better? What are things that our members are looking for? Um, and let's look at 2020 and see what we can do in terms of making it more of a business. Right. Mm. And then after how many years would you say you are a, a digital nomad? I would say... Probably the last year is when I've become like nearly full time. Um, yes. I'm kind of partial. Like I like to go home a lot to see my family and my friends. So I would say like this year I've been home like at the beginning of the year, I stopped home in the middle of the year and now I'm kind of home till the end of the year, but still traveling in the US. Um, right. Yeah. So the question was like, with all with that rhythm that you kind of make it for yourself because i think that it's more that's the freedom of having this lifestyle you maintain your job but like you you're able to go home and stay with your family and then you're able to go and you know visit new places but you're always constantly working basically right yeah yeah so okay. after all of this um this movement what would you say are the pros and the cons of this lifestyle? Yeah. Um, for me, like the pros, the biggest thing is flexibility. Like the fact that if I decided, hey, after Thanksgiving, I just want to go down to Florida and see friends for a bit. Like I can buy my plane ticket and go. Like I don't have to take off work. I don't have to check in with projects. I don't have to do anything like that. Um, and all I need is my laptop um, and maybe headphones and then I can go and see friends. And then in between seeing my friends, I can work. Um, flexibility, and then that kind of goes with freedom, like the fact that I have freedom to do this because a lot of my friends, I'm 27, so a lot of my friends are still like in the middle of their careers. They haven't like reached the top or anything yet and they just have like no freedom. Like they work nine to five, their commutes are usually 30 plus minutes. So they don't even get home till 5.30. So they leave before the sun is up and they come back when the sun is down. And then, you know, if they want to do if they want to work out, then they have to spend an hour and a half to two hours going to the gym um, and then right. making food and then all this stuff. And then by the time they're done for the day, it's like 8 p.m. And all they want to do is sit on the couch and watch TV. And it's kind of like right. even when they have their weekends, they're tired. So they don't really do much on their weekends um, and just to like go if like if I'm in Philly like just to have a day in Philly you need to plan for it and I was kind of like that doesn't sound fun <laughs> like that doesn't sound like for you to do that from when you graduate college at 21 until you retire when you're 70 like how does that 
like how is that a life kind of thing? It's not attractive at all. Let's say it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then in America, especially, they only most people I know only have two weeks of vacation. Like even in Korea, when I was a teacher, we had four weeks. So it's like you get these two weeks, and that's your travel time. Um, other pros: I'm my own boss. Like I don't have to answer to someone ahead of me. I just have to answer to my client. And if something's not working with the client, then usually it's a contract. Um, and then we just go our separate ways before it's like five years of working for someone you don't like. Um, yeah. And then I would say some cons are: I think definitely a bit of isolation. So a lot of this is why the Facebook groups are great because you meet other people, and then if you go somewhere new, you can have a meet up with someone, um, and you can even have like a co-working date or just a regular hangout. But a lot of it's isolation. Like you know, you go into an office and you have coworkers. You know, you have your like work husband or you have your like work best friend who know who gets what's going on. Whereas when you're a freelancer, you typically don't have that. Um, right. So that's a big thing that to just be aware of and to make sure you're making up for it in other ways. Um, and then another one I would say is your health. Like it's very easy if you like what you're doing to spend like ten hours doing it, and then by the time you look up in your computer, you're like, right. oh, "Well, there goes my day." Um, and so you just kind of have to stay on top of like eating properly and like moving, not even exercising, just moving. Like there are days where I've taken like a hundred steps, and it's just making I sure those keep on the whole month. <laughs> right. Well, that's it's all. It's actually something that we all should be looking at. But sometimes when we are home, it's true. Just time passes so fast and. We don't even realize we have been seated for so many hours. <laughs> so Samantha, let's say, because you are re pretty young too, but I know that this lifestyle, like you see it everywhere on social media and you know that it's growing up and a lot like a lot of new new professionals are wanting to, you know, never ever even have to have the experience to go to an office. They directly want to from college just go through so whether it is the case you want to do the change or you want to start this lifestyle like as soon as you get off college what would you be what would be your advice or tips that you definitely recommend these people to kind of like look up before yeah so absolutely the first thing you should do is establish a set of skills that you're able to promote yourself with So if you want to jump into being a freelancer, great. But if you have nothing to back up what you're doing, like you, you can't just make a living taking photos of yourself for Instagram, um, like right off the bat. So you need to be able to have these set of skills so that when you apply for jobs, you can say, hey, you know, um, I am a writer. And when I was in college, this is these are the internships I've had. Here's where I'm published, yada, yada, yada. Um, and you just, you have to have that skill set because I see so many people who are like, hey, I want to be um, a digital nomad, but my only experience is being a nurse in a hospital for five years, which, okay, so you're a nurse, but how can you, how can you translate that to being something remote or that you travel for or something like that? Um, and it's just looking into your skill set. Like maybe you did admin work, so you're really great at like doing just general admin keeping organized things like that or maybe I don't know it's really but you have to have that skill set because if you try and jump in without it it's it's like selling air you're not selling anything um, number two is to have a strong financial foundation um, it doesn't you don't have to have like $50,000 saved in the bank to do it but you do need to have some sort of foundation so that if you have a month where absolutely you get no work, nothing comes in, or some huge emergency happens, that you have money to take care of yourself. Because that's the big thing, is that you don't have like a like you don't have a workplace healthcare or backup system or sick days to use as a freelancer. So you need to have some sort of support. Um, and three, I think just baby steps. Like you don't have to sell all your belongings and travel for a year and live in hostels to make it work. Just take baby steps. So like right now I'm doing a few months at a time where I leave and then I'll come home 
switch out my suitcase or something and see friends and then I'll go out again. Um, but yeah, don't feel like you need to be doing this like long term all the time because I think that can really, if you're not ready for it, it can really hurt your health like mentally and physically. Um, and you can just feel like you're constantly grasping at straws uh, when you don't need to be. Right, and that's important point to, uh, I think that it's, it's important for them to be aware that you are on your own and this is like, for real, you, you, may, you may not have only two weeks free through the year, but in case of any event, like that you need to take care of yourself or you need time off, it's all, you're not working, you're not making money. And that's like very clear, right? So let's say you, Samantha, let's, let, let's kind of like, I just want you to explain in a practice way, practice way. Um, let's say you have like a potential um, customer. Okay. How, how do you develop, how do you build a relationship until you, this, you do, is there a contract there? Do you guys sign? What is it? How is that part of the deal? So usually I have a contract for myself um, that I've made for the client that's something like, oh, you need to give me like this much heads up if you're planning on discontinuing, here are the costs involved. Um, just like something, just an outline of like, here's what to expect. That way I'm protected legally. Um, just in case, you know, let's say they're paying me $2,000 a month to do something and then halfway through the month and I've done half the work, they say suddenly, oh, sorry, we're not, we're done. Like, we're not going to pay you for this month. Then I've just lost two weeks working on something that I right. should be paid for. And then if there's no contract or nothing to protect myself, then they, like, I just got screwed out of two weeks of work. Um, and it's for no money, essentially. So um, it depends. So when I was first starting, it was a lot of trying to network. So trying to, you know, answering job notices, applying for things I saw online. Um, it was it was actually quite, it's very difficult to get started because you kind of need that one person to say, hey, I'm willing to take a risk on you. Um, and then from there, when you kind of establish yourself, you have a little more confidence, then you kind of start seeing more people roll in. But it's that getting that first person to say yes can always be difficult. Um, and that's where like networking groups, you know, sometimes maybe not taking, you know, if you would want to charge $30 an hour, maybe taking on a short contract that only pays you $15 an hour, because at least you have that in your portfolio. Right. Like building, it's, well, it's, I would say it's something that is very similar when we want to get a job also when, where you live because you know it's all on the paper and you kind of have to show the experience that you have and show yeah. what work you've done so far. Okay, so Samantha, what is the near future looking for you? And also the far future, what are your yeah. plans? A lot. <laughs> <laughs> um, so for the rest here is kind of just catch up with everything, um, like making sure, catching up on content on my blog, um, checking in with all my clients and just making sure it's kind of like the, the fourth quarter now. So it's just wrapping up the year and making sure it ends strongly. Next year, um, there will hopefully be some tours and retreats that I'm planning. Um, a, one tour through my blog that I'm working on currently. Um, to get it going. And then with Milu and Female Digital Nomads, we're hoping to roll out some co-workations and retreats because that's one of the things members um, said they really wanted to start seeing. Um, yeah, and just continuing building my blog, working with my clients. Um, I'm lucky to be at a stage where I don't need to take on any new clients. Um, and my current clients are very like set, like I've been with them for at least a year or two now. Um, but yeah, and then of course traveling. Um, I'm gonna of start course. the year. Yeah, I'm gonna start the year in Norway, um, visiting a friend, and then I'll probably be in Asia because my tour would be in Korea. So I just kind of want to be in Asia for a few months um, and escape the rest of winter. And I want to congratulate you and also wish that you make all your plans come true. Samantha, please uh, share your social media info right now. Go ahead, please. Yeah, of course. Uh, the blog is www.thereshegoesagain.org. Instagram is there she goes a g n, um, and then Twitter and social, Facebook and everything. It's there she goes again. 
Samantha, thank you so much for taking the time to do this today. I hope much success and thank you. First thing, thank you so much. So there you go. If you have a soft spot for traveling and you are able to work digitally, you can become a digital nomad as well. Just make sure that you have what it takes. To connect with me, send me an email or a private message on my Facebook page. Stay connected and until next time, bye-bye.